What happens if the United States, with the dollar reserve system, what happens if they move on to a Bitcoin standard? And while everybody's expecting a deflationary crash, I'm expecting an inflationary crash. Now, the results are the same. We both have a standard of living that's been reduced. However, I think a reverse crash, an inflationary crash is actually much worse. But here's really where it gets really interesting. But if Trump wins, I think we could be at the top end of that range, which again would be, you know, somewhere in that $400,000 range. In a recent interview, entrepreneur and investor Mark Moss has revealed mind-blowing predictions about the state of Bitcoin depending on the results of the election. He also shared some of his secrets on why he believes Bitcoin cannot be stopped even when faced with a massive crash. Let us now view clips of Mark Moss as he explains more on his latest prediction on Bitcoin. Give this video a like to show your support and subscribe for your daily dose of crypto news. We hope you enjoy. Before we continue with the rest of the video do check out daily 5-minute crypto newsletter with all the latest crypto and Bitcoin news. It's a fantastic analysis of on-chain crypto data and breakdowns, and the best part is it's absolutely free. They'll cover expert predictions, breakdowns of on-chain crypto data, and any breaking news you need to know, all in a nutshell. Click the first link in the description and enter your email to join over 50,000 others in becoming a better crypto investor right now. You know, when you're looking at projections and you're looking at numbers into the future, um, if the numbers are too far off, it almost seems like the analysis is sort of worthless. But in this in this regard, because we have such a pivotal moment happening, uh, we sort of look at this. So what I would say is 100 percent. So we have Kamala, you know, the Biden administration, Kamala administration has been overly aggressive against Bitcoin and just cryptocurrency in general from, you know, what's happened with Kate Nalan's bank custodia, you know, the Fed denying bank charters um, all the way down to attacking on and off ramps, et cetera, um, as well as just taking an aggressive stance to it overall, including, you know, Elizabeth Warren passing all types of bills that could make it even illegal to uh, potentially mine Bitcoin or transfer Bitcoin um, on a self-custody basis. So very, very aggressive on that level. Um, on the other side, we have, you know, RFK and, and Trump both sort of taking this pro Bitcoin stance. And now, of course, they've come together in that regard. And so we certainly have this very stark difference. But here's really where it gets really interesting for me anyway, is that, you know, when we think about Bitcoin adoption, we think about game theory. And so who's going to move first? And in the world of investing or just in the world period, it's, it's a competitive world. Business is competitive, but in the world of investing, it's competitive. And so if a fund is outperforming me because they've added gold, well, I should probably add gold. If a fund outperforms me because they've added Bitcoin, I should probably add Bitcoin as well. But what about when a nation adds Bitcoin? And so we saw El Salvador do that. Now, El Salvador is one of the poorest nations in the world, so they're not a big influencer in the world. However, they've done so well with it that now President Bukele has been meeting with other leaders of other nations, small nations, UAE, Omar, things like that. And we've mm -hmm. seen them now starting to take a pro, pro Bitcoin uh, policy, starting to mine Bitcoin, et cetera. But what happens if the United States with the dollar reserve system, what happens if they move on to a Bitcoin standard? Not a Bitcoin standard necessarily, but let's say put Bitcoin on the reserves, which is what basically Trump and RFK have said they would do. What happens then? Well, game theory would tell us competitive world, uh, investment world tells us that every nation will have to respond to that, every single one. And so this is why this is a really big outlier. The way that I look at it is in Trump's first term, he did, he did a lot of what he said he would do. For example, he said that for every one new regulation I put into place, we'll remove three. And actually, if you look at his term, he removed five for every one that he put in. So for the most, you know, he said he drained the swamp. I mean, that's a very uh, broad term. You know, we, we can debate that. But the point is, is that I believe sort of his word. If he says that he would put Bitcoin on the strategic reserves and he has RFK on his platform and Cynthia Lummis, who's already put the bill forward, I think that probably has a very high likelihood of going through. Now, right now, the markets are pricing in about a 65% chance of winning for from the electoral college for Trump right now. So he has about a 65% chance of winning. And if he wins, there's probably a 90% chance that he actually does follow through with that and puts it on the reserves. And if he does that, then all the other nations have to move and put Bitcoin on their books. So if that happens, when we look at where Bitcoin could be by next year, I mean, we could be certainly at the top end of that range, maybe in the... Uh, sounds insane, could be at the three, $400,000 levels. Now, 
if Kamala wins, on the other hand, then obviously all of that I just talked about is off of the table. But that doesn't mean that Bitcoin dies. But Bitcoin is a global asset. Regardless of what the U.S. does, Bitcoin is going to continue going up. Bitcoin is there as a relief valve for the money printing. And as we've both laid out already, that's not going to stop. No matter who the president is, that's going to continue. So I think if Kamala wins, we're on the much more probably conservative side of the projection, which might be in the 100 you know, $100,000 range by next year, maybe a little higher, 150000 mm. But if Trump wins, I think we could be at the top end of that range, which again would be, you know, somewhere in that $400,000 range. Mark Moss reveals how the U.S. political stance on Bitcoin could dramatically influence its future. He points out that the Biden administration, particularly Kamala Harris and Elizabeth Warren, have been aggressively opposing Bitcoin, making it difficult to use or mine. On the other hand, figures like Trump and Robert F. Kennedy Jr. have shown support for Bitcoin, suggesting they might integrate it into national reserves if elected. This could trigger a competitive global shift, where other nations might follow suit, much like how El Salvador adopted Bitcoin. Moss speculates that if Trump wins, Bitcoin could soar to as high as $400,000, while under Harris, it might still grow but more conservatively, reaching around $100,000 to $150,000. Now, here are more clips of Mark Moss. Um, so I'm not one of the doomers predicting a crash. As a matter of fact, I've been the opposite. So uh, back to global liquidity. If you look back to October of 2022, I put a video on my channel said there is no market crash coming and here's why. In January, I made another video said that there's no crash coming. I said, here, um, here's the Fed's pivoting. Here's the data. I made another video said it's time to buy. I'm buying now. In, in August of 2023, I made a video that the bear market's been canceled. And I've been making videos saying that uh, what we're really expecting or what I'm expecting is a, is a crash. I'm expecting a massive crash. And I'm expecting a really, really bad crash. But it's a much different crash than most people expect. You see, a crash, if you think about a crash, what's everybody afraid of? a recession, a market crash, what does that mean? Well, if things crash, let's say what most people think, my, my retirement portfolio drops, my real estate, my mm -hmm. home drops, my, I lose my job, I get a lower paying job, my business doesn't do as well, I, I don't make as much money, that, that's what most people think of. Mm -hmm. But what does that mean? What all that means is that the quality of my life would go down. The standard of my living goes down. I don't have as much money. So I have to now eat uh, hamburger meat instead of steak. So really what they're saying is a crash means my standard of living goes down. But you see, prices don't have to drop for that to happen. Prices could go up so fast that my pay doesn't keep up and my standard of living also goes down. So it's a reverse mm. crash. And while everybody's expecting a deflationary crash, I'm expecting an inflationary crash. Now, the results are the same. We both have a standard of living that's been reduced. However, I think a reverse crash, an inflationary crash is actually much worse. And the reason why it's much worse is because on a deflationary crash, at least the markets reset and people mm. get a chance to get back in right? My yeah. kids could eventually buy a house, but in an inflationary crash, you never get another chance. It's just too late. And so yeah. I think that's where we're going. Um, now, will there be crashes? I mean, what is your definition of that? Of course, there's going to be massive volatility along the way. Uh, but yeah. I don't expect any long sustained depression. You know, maybe we see some sort of flash crashes, sort of like we saw in 2020, that probably last half the time, something like that, not tradable events, uh, because it's going to be volatile along the way. I mean, if you look at the chart of the Weimar inflation, hyperinflation, and you've, mm -hmm. I'm sure you've seen it right with the red lines overlaid, the volatility was insane. And so we'll have yeah. that. Uh, but I'm expecting the crash. Up. You mentioned that there are some markets where real estate has gone down. But on a U.S. Mm -hmm. national median basis, real yeah. estate is not down. It's up. Right. And that's because, as I made the case, it's a perfect proxy for this inflation. So the U.S. Yeah. has been increasing M2 by about 10% since 2019, and they're scheduled to continue to do that. Mm -hmm. So in five years from now, where is real estate? It's up 50%. It's up 50%. Mm. Now, not every single house, if you, you have to understand there's no such thing as a real estate market. There's thousands of markets. So even take Miami. Yeah. Miami's up 8% year over year. But there's condos in Miami that are down 50%. But wait, you said yeah. Miami was up. Yes, as a whole. But that doesn't mean that some condos along the water that were right. overbuilt aren't still down 50%. Um, in Austin, it was the best performing market for 20 years. 
overall, it's down about 20% Austin right now, but there's still some areas of Austin that are way up. And so you have to understand it's very pocketed, but I think overall, it's going to be moving up at the rate of inflation. We know that's going to be at least 10% per year, and that puts assets up at least 50% in five years from now. And I think people need to be prepared for that and taking action today for that. You're right. I have been through a, a bunch of cycles in Bitcoin, but I've also been in a bunch of cycles. So I started my career buying real estate uh, in Southern California at the bottom of a big crash. So from 89 to 92, the markets had crashed. I started buying real estate in 1995. So at the bottom of that crash, and I and I and then I was investing in internet stocks. So my roommate had quit his job. We were de day trading these things called internet stocks. We were talking about these weird names that nobody knew anything about in like in like 98, 99. Um, yeah. And the, the reason why I bring that part up, and then obviously the dot-com crash, but the reason why I bring that part up, Natalie, is because we were trading these things called internet stocks, and people thought we were crazy talking about these internet stocks, but today there's no such thing as internet stocks. They're just companies. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I bring that up is because we'll, we'll come fast forward. So now uh, yeah, I started I started looking at Bitcoin at, in around 2013 when the price started running up and I was going to buy. I'm like, oh my gosh, what, I don't know what this thing is, but it's going up. Then it spectac yeah. spectacularly crashed. I didn't buy it. I started buying in 2015 around 300 bucks and I saw it run from 2015 to 2017, got up to $20,000. And I was writing a cryptocurrency newsletter. Every once in a while, someone on Twitter wants to call me out. Oh, look, this guy used to be crypto. Yeah, I talk about it all the time. I wrote a crypto newsletter, and I personally turned—I <laughs> personally turned about a hundred grand and over five million dollars in that time period. Um, and uh, wow. we, we made some amazing calls. But the reason why I say that is because then 2018 happened and the market crashed and then 2019 and it seemed to drag on forever. And I did get to the point, Natalie, where I'm like, this will probably never can't come back. Why didn't I sell? I'm such an idiot. I should have sold. It's never coming back. That pit of despair. You've all seen that like Wall Street psychology yeah. thing. Uh, the pit of despair was like, it's never coming back. What's going to happen? But it did. And every time it crashes, we start asking ourselves if it's ever going to come back. And it does every time. Mark Moss explains that he's not expecting a traditional market crash where prices plummet and people lose jobs or wealth. Instead, he predicts an inflationary crash where prices rise so fast that people's income can't keep up, effectively reducing their standard of living. In this scenario, even though asset prices may not drop, people still struggle because everything becomes more expensive, making it harder to maintain their lifestyle. What about you? Given the possibility of an inflationary crash that could drastically impact our standard of living, how can individuals best prepare themselves to protect their financial future? Share your thoughts in the comments section below and continue the discussion. If you found value in this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more insightful discussions on cryptocurrency and finance. Thanks for watching. We hope to see you again. For more daily dose crypto news, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.